So we're recording this immediately after the Cavs just blew out the Wizards for the second straight game. And you know, they play the Spurs on Monday morning, so they're probably gonna get, you know, their third straight win before they go to Paris to play the Nets. And yet, something with this team just feels off. Yeah, there's whispers about Donovan Mitchell, and it seems like the Cavs may soon have a hell of a decision on their hands. Before we start talking about the Cavaliers, if you haven't already, make sure you leave this video a like, give us a subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on one of our videos. So the Cavs at time of recording are 20 and 15. That's good for sixth best in the Eastern Conference. And look, I would say the East is as a whole better this year than it was last year, but the Cavs still kind of feel like one of the early disappointments for the East. I felt like they had a great year last year despite the early playoff exit. Yeah, I wouldn't read a ton of the playoff exit. It still wasn't a great look. I mean, I don't think the Knicks were that great but what a regular season like the young core was looking great Mobley Garland had a great season and then Mitchell was playing incredible I mean who could forget that 71 point game yeah even with the playoff exit it leaves a sour taste in your mouth but overall it was a very successful season yeah they were clearly on an upward trend you know playing in 22 then you make the trade for Mitchell you get a top four seed in 23 so you're on that upward trend and this year I don't think anyone's expecting them to win 60 games but at least expect them to keep going up as of right Right now, technically, I mean, they're only half game out of the fourth seed, so they could get it again, but does anyone really think they're going to challenge Philly, Milwaukee, or Boston? I mean, I don't. No, not at all. I mean, even go down farther, the Heat, even the Knicks in Orlando, like, I might pick them over Orlando because they're a bit more experienced. I don't know. I wouldn't feel confident picking them over many teams in the East right now. And right now, I think they're on pace for, I think, 47 wins, given their current win total. So, a four-win decrease from last year? Yeah, the young guys... Allen, Mobley, and Garland, they've kind of just stagnated off of last year. If anything, they might have even taken a slight step back. Yeah, Mobley and Allen are basically giving you exactly what they gave you last year. Mobley, I think, is giving you one extra rebound. Jared Allen's giving you one more assist. Garland's the one where it's like, what's wrong with this guy? His scoring is down. His assists are way down. His three-point shooting is way down. And he's averaging almost four turnovers a game. Yeah, I think he's kind of one of those guys where, not in terms of their talent, but I compared a bit to Trey Young, like they're just inconsistent. I think some years Garland's gonna look really good. He's gonna be an all star, and some years are kind of gonna be like this, where it's just like, eh, like what happened? And to be fair to Garland and to Mobley, they've both missed a decent amount of time with injury. They both missed over a third of the season with injuries. But even with their playing, I mean, they just they haven't gotten any better. And if you're looking at the Cavs roster, if you're Donovan Mitchell, you're not gonna get significantly better at 27. Levert's not gonna get significantly better at 29. Struess is not gonna get significantly better at 27. So if the Cavs wanna take that next step as a roster it's kind of on the young guys and right now they're not holding up their end of the bargain it feels weird to be at this position now because go back like two years or hell even last season with that great season they had it felt like they were one of the up-and-coming teams like they were kind of viewed how the thunder are now or like the magic are now like they're next up and then now fast forward today it feels kind of like they're stuck in a way oh i was so high on cleveland last year i thought they were gonna beat the shit out of the Knicks in the playoffs. Totally missed on that one, by the way. But I was like, this team's got everything. Like, you got Garland, who can distribute and he can score a little bit. You got your superstar in Mitchell. You got Mobley and Jared Allen, who are great down low. Both can play defense. Mobley's got a bit of an offensive game. He can play on the perimeter a bit. But I was so high on this team. And now, like you said, they just, they feel like they're stuck in mud. And now, worst case scenario is kind of starting to form at least a little bit for Cleveland because there's been rumblings about Donovan Mitchell possibly wanting to leave. Brian Winhurst recently said that it's an open secret, basically, that Mitchell isn't signing an extension with the Cavs. And I've heard other reports and kind of just random tweets about it that he doesn't want to stay there. Now, that could be a leverage thing. He's just trying to get a bigger contract. Who knows at this point? But it's well known that Donovan Mitchell wanted to play for the Knicks. He's from New York. His dad works for the Mets. It seems like he wanted the trade to the Knicks, but ended up with the Cavs. So I don't know. I could see Donovan Mitchell leaving. I mean, Cleveland historically has not been a place that superstars have wanted to play. I don't know. 
It's funny because in doing research for this video, I also found conflicting reports that he's totally happy in Cleveland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> has no interest in leaving. Just don't trust anyone. How about that? Yeah, look, the Knicks for Mitchell, you know, he's from New York, probably grew up a Knicks fan, but candidly, unless it's like his basketball dream to be a Nick, to play in Madison Square Garden, I don't get this. I don't know. I don't get wanting to leave Cleveland for New York, unless it's just about, I want to be a Nick. In Cleveland, look, they're going through their struggles right now, but I think that roster can be just as good as the Knicks. I think they've got more potential than the Knicks. Like, I think Garland, Mobley, and Allen have got more potential than Brunson, Randall, and Ananobi. Yeah, I'll agree. agree. I mean, obviously, I'm insanely biased here. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I will right. say, Donovan Mitchell's not even the guy I necessarily want for the Knicks, but from his perspective, first of all, there's like the player, building your brand. It's just straight up New York and Cleveland. There's a huge difference well, there. yeah, if it's about, okay, I want a brand and I want to be the biggest star possible, then yeah, I get that. I'm talking like purely from a basketball standpoint. I mean, even from a basketball standpoint, the roster itself, yeah, I can see more upside with the Cavs, but the Knicks just beat the Cavs in the playoffs, and that was with Donovan Mitchell on the Cavs and not on the Knicks. And if you're looking at it from this perspective, the Cavs are kind of stuck in terms of their flexibility. Like, they sent out all of these picks and swaps to get Mitchell. The Knicks still have future picks. They have a lot more flexibility. It's going to be a lot easier to convince another star to come join him in New York than in Cleveland. So, I don't know. I mean, the Cavs have higher upside players, but the Knicks have much more flexibility with their roster. But the Knicks would probably have to burn some of those picks on Mitchell himself. They would. And they probably would have to burn Ananobi too, unless you could somehow swindle the Cavs into taking Julius Randle. For some reason, I just feel like Randle's gone in this scenario. I don't know where he goes, how it ends up, how it works, but I just imagine Randle's gone. Somehow you keep OG, you got Jalen Brunson, and then you kind of fill in the pieces from there. Three team trade. Yeah, exactly. So you've made your pitch on why the Knicks are a better place to be than the Cavaliers. But do you think that the Cavs should actually trade Mitchell? Because in my opinion, you do not do it unless he outright demands it. Unless somehow you're trading Mitchell to get a player better than him, which I highly doubt, but you that, never yeah. know. They have no incentive to kind of be worse. Like I said, they sent out all those picks for Mitchell. They're unprotected. You might as well just keep them. I mean, in hindsight, if I'm the Cavs, I just regret making the trade in general. But at this point, you kind of just gotta keep with what you got and hope some of the young players can get better. You're stuck at this point. You can't just trade them now and get less than what you traded them for. Yeah, I think if you're the Cavs, you have to run the risk of losing him in 2025. Like, it sucks if you're the Cavs, but it's a risk you have to take because if you trade him, like you said, you're not getting a player that's better than him. You're probably getting back a decent package. Maybe you get back Ananobi. Maybe you get back some picks. So, you're still gonna be good, but you're not gonna be a contender and now you don't have that many assets to improve the roster in the future. Like, get another star in the future. And would you even want to do that if Mitchell burns you? I wouldn't. Yeah, probably not. And look, the Cavs could still turn around. Like it's very early. And if you look at them last year, I think they're only two games worse at this point than they were last year. So you know what? They got time. They could turn it around. But all these rumblings about Mitchell and just the way the roster is performing as a whole, it's not good vibes right now, but Cleveland just stay the course or draft Bronny and get LeBron back. That's what you gotta do. This <laughs> fixes everything. You get Brawny. He's a good, like, premier defending guard. You don't really have that because Mitchell and Garland aren't really that. And then you get Braun back to finish the chapter. Wouldn't that be just a great end to the movie? The, like, <laughs> ten-part Netflix series that's coming where LeBron gets interviewed and he's like, I knew I had to come back home, play LeBron and win one more for Cleveland, Ohio. I could see it. That's all I'm saying. I can see it, Braun's too. the type. And I can't wait. Wait for it. <laughs> I would love it. That's the video, guys. What do you think the Cavs are going to do with Donovan Mitchell? I'd love to hear what you had to say in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving it a like, as it really does help us out. And while you're here, why not check out some of our other videos as well? And don't forget to subscribe to Synthetic Sports.